eh, Fredrik Stålbrand från eh, Berg Insight. Eh, so welcome Fredrik. Uh, you will talk about the state of the industry uh, on the global IT market. And I, I have seen parts of your presentation, so I know that the LPWA question will sort of be addressed there as well, and no coincidence there. But uh, with that, uh, super interesting to hear your view from Berg Insight on uh, what's going on in the industry. So fire away. Yes, uh, thanks, Martin. So uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Fredrik Stolbrand, and uh, I'm a senior analyst at uh, Berg Insight. And uh, for those of you who are not who are not familiar with the Berg Insight, uh, we are an industry analyst and uh, consulting firm that focuses uh, entirely on uh, the IoT market. So uh, today I'm going to talk about the current state of the global IoT market and uh, some of the trends that we see in the space and hopefully illuminate some of the topics uh, from a market point of view um, that uh, have already been covered here. So. First, if we look at the size of the market in terms of uh, cellular IoT connections, the uh, market grew 12% from uh, the previous year to reach 1.7 billion connections in uh, 2020. And uh, there was a decrease in growth uh, in the growth rate compared to uh, prior years, but um, this was primarily due to events in China uh, that, as you can see, makes up a uh, very large part of the total market and has largely driven this uh, rapid increase in uh, IoT connections in the past five years. Um, but 2020 was uh, actually the first year in a long time where we saw many Western markets grow faster than the, the Chinese market. Um, so if we look at the growth rates across uh, countries in the Asia Pacific region, you saw that Japan and uh, South Korea grew faster than China in 2020. And uh, the case of in the case of Japan, the growth was actually significantly significantly higher than uh, pre COVID levels at about uh, 35%, um, which is quite interesting. Uh, looking at the US and Brazil, which are the uh, largest IoT markets in the Americas region, uh, growth has slowed a little bit in the past two years um, and it was about 15% in uh, 2020. And uh, obviously in terms of size, uh, the US is uh, larger than, than Brazil. So moving on to the EMEA region, um, <clears throat> the growth rates has varied quite significantly between countries in the past five years. Uh, typically, uh, large projects related to smart metering or electronic road charging, these huge projects that can have a large impact on uh, individual markets. But uh, of course, there are country specific characteristics that uh, impact the uptake of uh, IoT solutions as well. Um, but in 2020 overall, growth rates uh, for these uh, markets in the EMEA region, uh, as you can see, was uh, in the span of uh, 10 to uh, 20 percent. Um, so one of the uh, major trends in the IoT market that we are tracking quite closely is uh, this migration as we uh, already covered here a little bit, but this migration from 2G and 3G connectivity to low power networking technologies that are based on uh, LTE, and uh, those include LTM and uh, Narban IoT. And uh, so for those of you who are al already familiar with these, this will be a bit of a recap, but of the two, uh, LTM is uh, more feature rich um, with the support for voice and uh, mobility, uh, full mobility. Uh, I should say. Uh, so mobility is of course essential for any trap application that involves uh, active tracking, uh, while voice capabilities are used in, uh, for example, voice enabled alarm systems. Uh, for example, so LTM also supports uh, significantly higher data rates and uh, lower latency. Um, and uh, narrowband IoT 
I should say, is more suitable for stationary objects that will be sending small uh, infrequent messages. Um, and uh, if you look at the pricing of these modules um, supporting these technologies, so narrowband IT modules starts a bit lower uh, in high volume from about uh, $5, while uh, LTM modules uh, cost from about $8 to, to $10. Uh, and compared to a, a normal LTE module, uh, that will be about double uh, starting from uh, $20 to $25, uh, depending on the configuration. Um, and uh, on the right hand, height, um, right, right hand side here, you can see the uh, number of networks. And uh, <clears throat> right now, there are uh, a few more narrowband IoT networks in the world compared to uh, LTM. Uh, but uh, we expect the number of LTM networks and uh, narrowband IoT networks to converge quite quickly, as we are seeing that, um, or we are aware of many LTM uh, networks rollouts that will happen this year, uh, especially in Europe. So looking at the uh, actual deployments of, of these um, devices supporting these technologies. There are close to 30 million LTM devices and uh, about 160 uh, million narrowband IoT devices deployed worldwide. But as you can see in this picture, most narrowband IoT connections are deployed in uh, or, or are in China. Uh, so if we look at the number of devices deployed worldwide and exclude China, uh, LTM is, is the more popular option. Um, and if we look at some use cases, transport and logistics is the uh, largest vertical market for uh, LTM devices uh, that are used in uh, applications like fleet management, asset tracking, uh, and bike and uh, scooter sharing. Um, and quite surprisingly, utilities is the uh, second largest application area where um, these devices are used in some major smart metering projects, like even smart water metering, where the devices are battery powered, uh, which is quite interesting and really shows the, the power efficiency of uh, technology like LTEM uh, and some some other use cases that you can see here is uh, alarm panels and sensors, smart buttons, uh, uh, like industrial gateways and uh, smart watches. Um, so for, for narrowband, um, these use cases are more characterized by simple sensor-based devices like smart meters, smoke detectors, parking meters, and uh, industrial sensor nodes. And um, as you can see here, utilities is the largest vertical market by far. Um, and uh, some other trends that we uh, see <clears throat> Uh, in this space is uh, that most end markets actually remain strong despite COVID-19. On the other hand, as we've read in the news, uh, semiconductors are in short supply. And uh, this is, of course, starting to limit the, uh, or start to impact IoT device manufacturers. And uh, it looks like this shortage will persist during the year, unfortunately. Um, we are also seeing that eSIM uh, adoption is uh, growing. This is quite an old, or it's a technology that has been around for quite some time, but it has matured a lot in uh, in uh, in recent time. Uh, so a few a few years ago, there were mainly large automotive OEMs that put um, that used eSIMs in their connected car programs. But now we are starting to see lots of different product categories that, that come with an eSIM. Um, and again, as I've already talked about, uh, cellular LPWA connections uh, continue to grow close to 100% uh, <clears throat> uh, a year. 
and uh, is really outpacing alter alternative LPWA technologies such as uh, LoRaWAN. Um, what we are also seeing is a growing interest in uh, private networks, and um, it's especially for use at critical production sites. Um, but uh, overall, I would say these initiatives are quite in an, an early stage, but we see lots of interest there. Thank you, Frederick. Very interesting. Uh, I really appreciate this to get some uh, some outside in perspective of things as well that are supported by figures and, and the work that you do at Berg. Uh, it's it's uh, super interesting. Uh, personally, I, I was, um, first of all, I, I was uh, happy when I, I saw the, the draft outline of your presentation, actually, because it supports a lot of the things that we've been uh, advocating as ourselves for the last couple of years, so uh, it's always fe feels good to uh, to have that right. But w one thing that I was particularly interested in was actually how big a difference it is uh, in the deployments between narrowband IoT and LTM if you exclude the China figures. Uh, I, I knew that China is a, is a very proactive market for narrowband IoT, but that. It, the pendulum was swinging so far to the other side when you uh, exclude China. It surprised me a little bit even. What are your thoughts about that? How, how does it come that uh, LTM has become so much more popular uh, in the rest of the world? Yeah, yeah. Um, we believe there are a couple of different reasons for this. So when we talk to device makers, uh, we often hear that LTM is a bit easier to implement um, without going into uh, technical details, um, but there's also the roaming aspect as well. Um, so there's been a lack of roaming agreements for narrowband IoT, uh, although this is starting to change, but um, it makes the sales of devices into different geographies more difficult. Um, roaming for LTM is uh, a little bit easier to solve. Um, and on, to on top of this, um, uh, LTM is is a, a bit more versatile t technology, uh, as I talked about previously, with support for um, mobility and, and voice. So that's uh, that's that's our, our thoughts uh, on this um, uh, on this development. Mm. Uh, no, and I, I think um, uh, I myself I, I can understand that, and, and uh, most likely some of you of the customer side that are on the call today who have done this and, and it relates back a little bit to what we talked about earlier today as well with ease of, of implementation and, and actually getting the end-to-end -end solution in place uh, and been working. So very interesting. Uh, thank you Frederick uh, for your time. Mm -hmm.